Like it or not, popularity carries a lot of importance in our world. Our next guest has written a book on the topic. It's titled Popular, The Power of Likeability in a Status-Obsessed World. He is Professor Mitch Prinstein, Distinguished Professor of Psychology and Director of Clinical Psychology at UNC Chapel Hill. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So what made you think that popularity would be a good topic to write about? <laughs> well, you know, I've been interested in popularity since I was a kid and wondering why some kids were more popular than others. But when I was pursuing Did my... we all wonder right. that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were all kind of focused on that for at least a time. But um, I went to grad school and started working on it and uh, really was just shocked how much popularity really affects us decades later, 30, 40 years later. I was surprised how much the same dynamics even play out when we're adults. There's something about the ways that we interact with others that we repeat over and over again for the rest of our lives. Now, of course, uh, all of us who have grown up uh, remember the, the issue of popularity when we're kids, but how does this help play out in other points in our lives and not just on the playground? Well, the important thing that people uh, sometimes don't realize is that there are two different kinds of popularity. One of those kinds is the kind that we might have forgotten about, but it played a role when we were three years old, believe it or not, and it still plays a role when we're adults. And that's likability, the extent to which people genuinely enjoy spending time with us. They like sharing with us. Um, they enjoy our company. We make them feel good. But anyone who's been to high school probably remembers that other kind of popularity, which we call status, and it's those kids who are influential, sometimes a little aggressive. They're highly visible. People want to emulate them. And that kind of popularity, it used to go away and as we grew out of adolescence. Not so much anymore, and it turns out that it's related to pretty negative outcomes long term. How does that end up being negative? Well, research has followed those kids that were the most popular in high school, and what they found is that when they grow up, they tend to still be focused on status. They're very interested in being visible and even controversial just to get the attention of others. Studies have found that those high in status grow up to have relationship problems at work and at home. They have problems with addictions. They're at greater risk for anxiety and depression as well. You mentioned that that was the second type of popularity, and the first type was just a, the, the likability and being liked to when you're even a little kid. Uh, what about that type of popularity? Does that have long-term impacts? Well, you know, it does. So being likable is something that helped us out when we were three, and it helps us all the way until we're 103. Those who are the most likable actually tend to be more likely to be hired, promoted, to get uh, higher salaries, to be better team managers and leaders. Um, they do better at home with their spouse. They have happier marriages, more well-adjusted kids. And believe it or not, if you're more likable, you're less likely to get physical illnesses and you're going like, uh, to live longer as well. So not just the, the, the aspects that we might know, but some things behind the scenes uh, in our lives. This likability factor sounds like it plays a, a major positive role. It really does. There's something about the way that we've evolved as a species and the way that our brains operate today that makes us remarkably attuned to our position among others and how much we're a part of the herd or we are not. And it turns out that our cells, our DNA, will respond within just a few minutes as soon as we feel we're being excluded. And we now are starting to understand how that makes our brains operate differently, our health change. Likeability ends up being something that we didn't just leave back in school, but it's a powerful factor for so many aspects of our lives. We are chatting with Professor Mitch Prinstein of UNC Chapel Hill, author of the book Popular, The Power of Likeability in a Status-Obsessed World. Uh, how'd you go about the, the study of this? Obviously, uh, we all know what it's like to be popular or unpopular as kids, uh, little kids, and then also in high school, as you were discussing. But obviously, there was some, some research, some scientific research that went into your findings. Oh, there's been so much research on this topic, and a lot of it involves working with young children and asking them to tell us who in their classrooms are the most and least well-liked, who are the most and least popular, the way we sometimes define it as status. 
and then following those kids over years. There's been some research that's followed kids all the way until they're middle-aged adults to really look at what the impacts are. Um, in our lab, we also look at how kids with different levels of popularity have different responses to stress by measuring their heart rate and their hormones and their DNA and their blood. We mentioned the positive impact of likability throughout our lives. What about the ones who are identified fairly early on as being unpopular? Does it have lifelong negative impacts? Well, it depends. Um, there are plenty of ways to change your popularity and make sure that you're not falling into the same trap over and over again. And it's remarkably easy to kind of repeat your experiences decade after decade, interaction after interaction. For those who unfortunately don't, it's true. Those who are rejected um, and are pretty unpopular tend to have a hard time. Um, they're at greater risk for a long list of negative outcomes, and that's pretty concerning. It's where I hope that the book will help people to understand how to break those patterns, if not for themselves, then for their children, because um, there are a lot of ways to tune into um, some very simple things to succeed a little bit more in this domain. You just alluded to this, but what are some of the implications that you see from this work about how people can make their lives better by being more attuned to this popularity factor? You know, it's really amazing how much we tend to contribute to the experiences that we have day in, day out. If we walk into a room with our arms folded and we're not making eye contact, people will actually experience sadness at a greater level than if you say the same things and you're the same person, but you simply act in a way that expects people to like you. Um, little things like that, all the way to the ways that we interpret the world around us. There's now uh, research that suggests that if we were unpopular and we look at a crowd, we're more likely to attune to those people who are giving us negative signals. If we are popular, looking at that exact same crowd, we spend more time looking at positive feedback. You can imagine how that unpopular filter that we might be wearing all day is literally changing the world we think we are surrounded by and how that can have cascade effects in such important ways. You also earlier talked about uh, kids and making changes that perhaps would help our own children. Are there some, some lessons that can be learned about how to deal with this issue in ways that are beneficial for your children? Absolutely. And I think that issue is more important now than it has ever been in the history of our species, believe it or not. And there are a few reasons for that with social media being one. It used to be that we would grow out of this concern for status and who is most popular, and we would go back to valuing likability. In fact, our whole society really cared about real connections and community. That's not the society we live in anymore. You know, our kids are really getting explicit messages in high school now that their value can be measured by the number of their Instagram followers. And adults, too, sometimes fall prey to that desire to really get lots of retweets or, you know, likes on their profiles. We've kind of become a world that has an interminable high school now where we've all held on to that most popular kind of status in a way that we shouldn't. I think it's really important that parents give kids the message that there are two forms of popularity. One leads to good outcomes and one not so much and helping kids remember which is which.